It's been crazy hot outside the last couple of weeks. So, I find myself escaping to the basement with a nice cool beverage and some mail to open. This beer here is from a relatively new microbrewery in Winnipeg uh, called Stone Angel Brewing. Those of you old enough to remember what a book is uh, may recognize the literary reference in there from a local author. Um, which has nothing to do with the brewery, but that's just the name of the place. Um, so this is called Nocturne Mild English Ale. And it is pretty much what it says. Uh, it's not too heavy, despite it being dark. Flavor's fairly subtle. Um, maybe a bit of nuttiness, maybe a bit of chocolate and coffee. Not nearly as much as some of the stouts that I have been having recently. It's not too bitter. Um, it's only about three-ish percent alcohol, so it's one of those beers that you can drink a whole bunch of and not stumble, which is good because it tastes nice and it goes down easy. This is not a commercial. Although I did spend some time there last night uh, when I was picking this up. Cool place. And the way! Got the mail to open. Where should we start? Let's start with that one back there. What does it say? Aw, they've hidden the lies under the sticker. What do we got here? Uh, quantity 2 WX780 star 1. Hmm. Oh, oh, I feel... Oh, ho! There we go. It is... They could have called it a module. Because that's kind of what it is. It is a little voltmeter ammeter module. Um, three digits for each. I think you can kind of see it there. And what do we have on the back here? A couple of adjustments. I adjust and V adjust. Voltage and current. A three pin input there. And a two pin input there with a plus and a minus. This little loop of wire looks for all the world like it should be a current shunt. Um... And this one is marked plus on that pin. And can we see what the other pins are marked? Not really. Uh, maybe that middle pin is marked minus. So obviously one of these leads, presumably that one, goes in series with your load. And... This one will be uh, measuring the voltage, and I don't know why there's three wires. Ground, obviously. Um, one of them will be the voltage that you're measuring, and one of them is probably just a voltage to power the thing. What's that little three-terminal bit in the corner there? Hmm. I thought it might be a voltage regulator, but it's not. M5333B. I have to give that a quick look up. Also, go and check the listing. Dual display LED DC 0 to 100 volt 10 amp digital voltmeter and meter panel amp volt gauge for $3.74 Canadian from Top Dash Fashion 1202. Noted electronic seller, no doubt. Uh, free shipping, of course. I'm going to guess there's not going to be an awful lot of. Uh, information down here about how to hook it up working of the meter itself okay so that's the actual operating power that makes a certain amount of sense 4 to 30 volts just to run it uh, the meter itself draws 20 milliamps but it can measure up to 100 volts and it can measure 0 to 10 amps in 0.1 volt steps and 0 0.01 amp steps Hmm, two colors, red and blue LED, LED tubes. Right. The uh, That little three-pin device that I was curious about on the back of it. Couldn't find it anywhere in English, but everywhere I looked called it a low dropout uh, voltage regulator. This is the only data sheet I could come up with in a fairly quick search. Which doesn't tell me very much, other than the pinout on it and 
there you go but uh, by the part number somewhere down here yeah there we go five three 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 its output voltage is 3.3 .3 volts which makes a certain amount of sense I guess you didn't think I was actually going to abandon this without trying it first did you so I did a little bit of looking around and I found some pictures of this thing in use online um, the three wire connector red black and yellow uh, red and black power the unit and yellow is the measured voltage and then the two heavier ones as we guessed are the, the current measurement and they are independent of each other which is kind of nice so the black wire that powers it is also the common for the measurement so I've got that okay first of all I got it powered from here which is about 5.7 volts um, as we saw in the listing it really doesn't matter that much anywhere from 4 volts up will power it which is kind of cool um, so I've got all the black wires tied to the negative side of this uh, this little 9 volt battery here and I'll just touch the old wire to the measured side or to the uh, positive side of the battery and we can see a nice flickery 8.5 volts it's not flickering to my naked eye it's just the camera doing that okay so that's cool now then I've got the current measuring again uh, connected to the ground and the positive wire connected through these random resistors that I found lying around in the corner of my workbench so that measures at about 11 or what, 110 milliamps that's cool but you can also measure current and voltage at the same time so what is that that draws it down to 5.7 volts and what do you got 90 milliamps now as it draws it down 5.5 as we're killing my battery here 5.77 so that reads exactly the same as that and this thing told us 5.7 that's definitely close enough for uh, messing around in the shop it's not instrumentation quality but if you're building a power supply or something that sounds like just a fine thing all right next in uh, another one oh, okay fitting mg5 star 2 millimeter 30 pieces mg8 2 millimeter 15 pieces okay that seems more accurate than the usual customs declaration wonder what it really is oh it's a couple of bags of little round magnets okay and I guess we already know the size of these so this one is magnets of that size they're pretty skinny actually Ooh. and pretty fragile just dropping that one onto the pile broke it in half Eek, and now it's nice and sharp that's horrible now I have fragments of broken magnet well okay these aren't very I guess these things always have been assumed to be not the most durable objects in the world they're known more they're known for their magnetism not for their unbreakableness and then there's 20 of these smaller ones I'll just leave them in the bag because I already told you what size they are 15 pieces 8 by 2 millimeter round and 35 strong magnet magnetic neodymium rare earth permanent magnet octothorpe a for some reason from Bozzy store I got these at an auction for 91 American cents or a door 20 Canadian and from the same seller 30 pieces 5 by 2 millimeter round uh, all the same uh, blah 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 um, and I also got this at auction for 87 cents Canadian or 66 American uh, from 
Bozzy store. Let's look at the biggest one here. Five training characters pick is what it calls itself. Uh, lots of bubble pack. Lots of bubble pack. Oh, okay. I remember these. This was a long time ago. I guess I should start telling you guys how long these things took to get here. Does that interest anybody? These are little adhesive backed guitar pick holders. Do we have any guitar picks here? Hang on. Okay, guitar picks. So what these are for is you stick them, stick it onto the body of your guitar someplace and you just load it up. Oh, that one's a little bit big with, oh, okay, that is just as deep as they go. Just load it up with spare guitar picks. Looks like that one takes about three. And then when you inevitably drop one on the stage, oh, that's kind of crappy actually. It should go, you'd think they'd, ah, oh, there you go, it goes deeper in there. Oh man. It's a slick idea. Poor implementation. Let's try a different one here. So you're supposed to be able to just yoink one out of there on the fly really quickly and easily. Well, there we go. Okay. It takes a bit of a jam to get them in there. So then you just grab one or two on the fly and keep strumming. doesn't work as well as advertised. That's too bad. That's disappointing. Five pieces plastic guitar pick plectrum holder case box acoustic heart shaped YG from Love Shopping 2013. Um, five of them for a dollar fifty one Canadian. There's others who have them for cheaper crap. That, oh, that's on sale. Okay. So, yeah, so-so, but, and they were still cheap, right? Okay, the other thing yeah. in that package, ah, it's guitar strings. That's probably actually why I ordered from this seller in the first place, and I just added those other things on. And these are, these are acoustic guitar strings. Um, you could use one on an electric, but they're intended for an acoustic, um, they're steel, acoustic, steel string acoustic strings as opposed to nylon string for your classical guitar. And I thought they were kind of cool because the wound strings are colored, multicolored. Can you see that? I'm not going to tell you what the colors are. Yeah, that one's kind of yellowy orangey. That one's kind of, I don't know what these two are though. Anyway, whatever. And are these two unwound strings? No, they're not colored, I don't think. So that's cool. I think I'll put those on my old acoustic guitar one of these days. Does anybody care to see how to string a cheap guitar with cheap strings? I don't know. One set, six pieces, rainbow colorful color strings for acoustic guitar accessory UT. Also from Love Shopping 2013, $1.55 for the set. Anyone who plays guitar will know that that is cheap, even by cheap string standards. Now then, I don't have any great expectation of these to sound awesome, not break almost immediately, um, but they look cool. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, from the lowest to the highest, uh, the low E string is red bronze wound, uh, and this is in millimeters. I translated these at one point. They're, uh, kind of a medium set. Um, uh, I'm not going to go through the, you know, the math again, but, uh, anyways, uh, so... Low E strings, red, yellow, green, blue, and the B and the high E are stainless steel. Well, that should be fun. 
let's just find out rather than doing the math so that is about 30 thou on the low E and what's that look like about 12 thou on the high E so that's actually a relatively light set of strings for acoustic Okay, capacitive touch switch button, it says. It quite actually could be, quite likely. Oh, -ho, it is. It really is. They are, in fact, little capacitive touch switches. That's cool. I'm going to have to play. But first... 10 pieces TTP223 capacitive touch switch button self lock module pipe CL. That from Entone Clothing, uh, $1.91 for the 10 of them, which is what, 19 cents each. Neat. So there's not much to them. Um, well, six pin chip which I assume is the TP223 um, resistor capacitor and what is that an LED in the corner maybe hmm what does it have to say about it two and a half to five and a half volts uh, trigger setting mode one equals short Zero equals no short. Hmm. Oh, that must be that little pad, jumper pad down the bottom. Oh, no, it's the A and the B. There it is. Um, I would show you this in real life, but it's just easier here. Uh, so, A, B, zero, zero. Okay, so with both of them not shorted, it's a non-latching high TTL level output with the B shorted and the A not. It's a high T self-locking. Okay, so it's either a latching or non-latching and a higher level output. That's cool, but the default is no latching, high level output. Okay, cool. Let's go play. Because obviously you got to play with these things. Why would you get them otherwise? I soldered a set of pins on there when you weren't looking. Um, I'll plug that into one of these teeny little breadboards and put it onto one of these things just to hold it. Um, so now then, I'll just use one of these for reference. So if I flip it over that way, everything will be still in alignment, right? Right. Okay, so we got VCC at that side Ooh, zoomed in that side ground this side and the output signal in the middle um, so it says it's going high so I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I'm doing put a resistor or a LED in there and a resistor across to ground Like that. That should work, shouldn't it? Why wouldn't it work? Got five volts coming in over here. Let's turn it on. <gasps> you don't even have to touch it. You can just get close to it. Let me rotate this up so you can see. I am a few millimeters away, and it's that slick. Does it work if you've got... It does. You can touch it with a, with a probe. How about yeah, I'm holding the insulated handles? That even works. Wow. Or something that's pretty much completely plastic. That doesn't work. But no, so my hand's insulated here. Okay, so basically anything that can make an antenna, I guess. That's pretty slick. 
What am I going to use those for? Hmm. You know, I should have looked earlier. There is an LED on the bottom of it. I didn't even need to rig up my own circuit. <laughs> cool. What do you say? One more? Modules. Quantity 2. He's a mysterious one for last. Kits! Oh, I like kits. Two of them, are they the same? Yes, they are. Okay, the circuit board says that the main chip on this thing, let's just dump it out. Okay, circuit board says LM386, which is an amplifier chip. Um, we've got a three and a half millimeter headphone type jack. Looks like a switching one, maybe. One, two, three, four, five pins, ground. So yeah, the looks like the two, the tip and the ring are switching. That's neat. Okay. Some header pins, dip socket, a couple of good sized capacitors, resistors, different value resistors, another capacitor, some little capacitors for bypassing, a potentiometer of unknown value, although that says 10 or 100k, so we'll believe that, I guess, for now. An LED, because you gotta have an LED. Even comes with a sexy little knob for the potentiometer. That's nice. All the best audio equipment has that. And a nut and a washer. Okay. That'll be a nice quick one to throw together. Uh, says on the board, 5 to 12 volts. Um, so what do we got here? S There's a bunch of header pins. SP there. A little speaker output, I guess. Um... Probably audio in. Ooh, nice little blue solder mask on this side. That should be a fun kit. And I'm thinking that I got two of them to be stereo. Why wouldn't you? One piece super mini amplifier board, 3 volt to 12 volt DIY kit LM386. $1.41 each from Horizon Electronic, and I bought two of them. All it really has to say down here in the product listing is an inventory of parts, which is useful enough. But the screen print has a good layout on there, so I don't think we should have any trouble throwing this thing together when I choose to do a kit build. Well, that was fun. What a neat stuff. Slightly disappointed in these things. Good thing they were really cheap. They might just need to fit smaller guitar picks um the magnets a little bit fragile but they're going to be useful be interesting to play with these cheap guitar strings just because they're cheap um, i'm going to enjoy putting those audio amplifier kits together this little volt ammeter is probably going to be useful for something or other at some time and those touch switches i am intrigued by those i'm not sure what i'm going to get up to with them but i'm sure it's going to be fun Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, if you've got something to uh, ask me about or complain about or or uh, just discuss in general, please come on down to the comments. Everybody, uh, thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you later.